What, really? I asked after Chris let us in without any kind of fight. Yeah, your pet vampire back there looks like she's gonna take a bite out of my ass if I don't. He answered. So what do you need? So I told him about the guy Hector described and why we're looking for him, with as few details as absolutely possible. Something about giving these guys any information about anything just feels, well, dirty. But most unexpected of all, as soon as I was done explaining, he answered bluntly. Oh yeah, that guy's dead. Blew his brains out in front of me a few days ago. Huh? I asked in disbelief. Why would he do that? Long story short, he killed a server driver, and when we caught up with him, bang. That's not helpful at all! I yapped at him. So you're saying our only real lead just shot himself? Yeah, sorry kid. Oh, hey, wait a second. Hey Mark! He suddenly called around the corner. Where's Fatso's phone? Desk, top right drawer. Mark spoke from out of sight, which prompted Chris to walk over to an old metal desk and take the guy's phone out. Maybe there's something in his contacts or messages or something. Chris said, handing me the phone. As he said that, someone walked around the corner pushing a cart with a dead body on it. Hey, I said once I saw the man's face. Hey. Hey, hey, you! What the hell? I yelled, jamming my finger almost in his nose. Do you know this man? Destiny asked. Yeah, I do! This is the asshole who tried to kill me! He jammed a goddamn gun in my head! Hey, no hard feelings, right? Everybody makes mistakes. Water under the bridge and all that. The guy responded, holding his hands up defensively as a small green creature ran up his leg and onto his shoulder. What the funky fuck is that? I squealed, snatching my hand back away from him. And you's ever seen a goblin before? Yes, as the thing picked at his ear with one of its claws. Why do you have a... Wait, a goblin? You're not living in the same apartments as I am, are you? I asked suspiciously. I might be. Why? Never mind. I don't have the energy to deal with this right now. I dismissed, turning back to Chris and taking the phone from him. So how are we supposed to figure anything out with this? I asked as I looked it over. Not my problem, kid. Chris told me as we walked over to a table and pulled a cloth over what looked like an old book. Now make tracks, we gotta do stuff. After some time of driving around trying to figure out a new lead or anything remotely helpful, we pulled into the apartments. And then we all noticed a man standing in front of mine. A dark-skinned man in blue robes. Oh god, he's here to start something, I know it. I thought to myself in a panic. Please, please don't escalate the situation. I begged Destiny as we came to a stop and all got out. Hey, uh, Ryan, right? What brings you here? I asked nervously. But before he answered, he reached into one of his pockets and pulled something out. Apparently this fell out of someone's pockets as they bounced up the cave walls for the fifteenth time in a row. He said, handing me Destiny's missing cell phone. Oh thanks, I guess. I told him as I took it. But as I did, I heard the door shut behind me as Harley walked out of the office. As she walked past us, I noticed Ryan giving her a kind of foul look for some reason. You got a problem? She snapped at him when she noticed. No. At least not like the one you'll have when Athena gets the word that you're neglecting your vassal responsibilities. He answered with a smirk that caused a look of horror and realization to tear across Harley's face. You're a vassal too? Yeah. Yes, we are. We? What do you mean we- It got away. Ryan, it got away. A young Asian looking woman with light brown hair yelled as she came running around the far corner of one of the buildings. I saw a goblin, I'm sure I did. She sulked as she joined the rest of us, resting her hands on her knees as she gasped for air, her own light blue robe fluttering softly in the breeze. Oh god, there's two of them, I thought to myself as she caught her breath. Wait, you saw a what? Where? Harley shouted at her, shaking herself back into focus, causing the heaving girl to point at the upper level of the apartments. Son of a bitch, I knew it! She shrieked before darting up the nearest set of stairs. So is that all? I asked Ryan as we all continued to watch an irate Harley stampede up the stairs. Hmm? Oh yeah. We had to run a few errands and my insisted we bring this back. He explained, gesturing at the still exasperated woman. She's new. When she heard her name mentioned, she looked up and noticed Rissa standing there. Oh yay, Asian sister! She chirped as she wrapped both arms around her. 
I'm that sweet, but I'm not Asian, Rishi admitted. <laughs> oh, you're funny. You're funny. She squeaked, apparently under the impression that Rissa was joking. Come on, my. Time to go. Ryan interjected, grabbing a handful of her robes and pulling her along behind him. Still got a lot to do, and my patience is... There isn't much left. Bye, everyone! I love you! Mai shouted back to us as she left. She is just precious. Destiny sighed once they were both gone. I have... No effing idea what I'm supposed to do with this stupid thing. I mumbled later that day as we sat around my living room. Hey, this is about you, you know? I asked Rissa as she absently poked at one of the costumes on the other side of the room from boredom. Hmm? I mean, huh? Did you just do another Chinese? I think so. Anyway, what did you say? She answered. I was saying this whole thing is about you, so you could, like... Help me? Or something? I said, waving the phone at her. Contrary to popular belief, I'm not a private investigator, and I have no idea what I'm doing. And where the hell did Destiny go? Oh, she... what'd you call it? Poofed away a few minutes ago. I think she got a call and said something about Dr. Jackal catching fire again. She told me, still sounding like she was only half there. So I decided to drop it until Destiny poofed back in the middle of the room covered in sweat. Damn of a t-shirt, still smoldering a little. Rough day? I asked her as she drug her feet across the floor and stuck her head in the freezer. That man is a plague on this earth, she complained into it. As she spoke, I noticed the mailman pass in front of the window, which made me jump out of my seat and sprint through the door. What the hell was that? They both asked me as I walked back inside, holding the package in my hand. My new chain ring just came! I exclaimed happily as I tore the packaging open. I've been using the same one I got the same time as the bike this whole time, and it wasn't that good. I've mashed all the teeth in and the crunch is starting to drive me crazy, so I got a new one, I explained. Hey, is that an affinity ring? Risha asked, looking over my shoulder as I took the old one off and put the new one on. Yeah, why? I asked her, trademark. That's like a $100 chain ring. Yeah, and it's also part of my sole source of income. Good parts last long and save you money in the long run, I explained to her. If I gotta ride this thing around all the time for a living, I want the ride to at least be enjoyable between near-death experiences. Rissa, wake up! I shouted, almost kicking the bedroom door open. Holy shit, wake up, I had an idea! Huh? Uh, what's going on? She asked, rubbing her eyes. I don't know. Destiny told her, walking in behind me, also rubbing her eyes. He just jumped straight out of bed and started rambling about something. The phone! I figured out something we can use the phone for! You remember how Abigail said something about the collector guy's house getting broken into? Well, she probably knows a lot about the people who collect things that that app guy made. So what if we check the phone's contacts and see if any of them match the collectors in the area? Holy shit, that's actually a really good idea. Destiny said as Rissa shuffled around to drag herself out of bed. What are you doing? I asked Destiny as she left for a second and returned with a phone. Texting Abigail. You spend a fortune every time you walk into her shop. So I'm asking her to meet us somewhere before you go broke. She explained as she poked at the screen on her phone. Hey, that's... Kind of fair, I guess. You realize what you're asking is a huge violation of privacy policy, right? Abigail asked me the next day as we stood at the counter of a shop. She refused to meet us anywhere else, which didn't make Destiny all that happy. I had to promise not to wander off whilst we were there. Yeah, yeah, can we just get the names, please? I asked as I scanned the shop, looking for prompts I hadn't yet identified. You know, Abigail said, narrowing her eyes at me when she saw me looking around. I just got one of the practical Doc Ock claws from the Sam Raimi movie. Bullshit! You want to see it? I have it sitting in the back right now. She asked slyly. Yes! No! Destiny interjected. Stay focused! And stop tempting him. You know it's easy. Plus, isn't this supposed to just be a front for your business anyway? Yes, but it's a very good front. Abigail explained. Plus, how do you think I account for the appraisal income? I have to file taxes, you know. And I can claim the income as prop appraisal. Isn't that money laundering? It's not money laundering. 
I don't see that far in yours. So out of all of those, only one matched? This has to be our guy, right? Rissa asked as we left the shop and got into Destiny's car. Maybe. It's more than we had so far, I admitted. Now the question is how to handle this if this is the right guy, I added, causing everyone to go quiet. Once we got to where we were going, the consensus between Gender Swap Dracula and Frankenstein was, and I quote, I guess we'll just have to wing it. Because how bad could that possibly go? Am I right? My friend's a psychopath, so my life is terrifying. We all walked up to the house and noticed the door looked like it had been recently kicked in or something. Exchanging nervous looks, I reached out and gave it a few knocks. Seconds later, we heard a latch clink on the other side of the door, as the door opened just enough for someone to look through. What? The guy asked sharply. Um, hi? We just have to ask a few questions if you don't mind. Questions? What kind? It's about the Festus artifacts. Destiny answered, which caused his eyes to widen as he snatched the door open and pulled us inside. What's wrong with you? Don't just blurt that out. What the hell happened here? I asked as I looked around the half-demolished house. Is that... Are those bloodstains? I added, noticing large dark patches everywhere. And what happened there? I shouted, pointing on the huge gash in the wall. I was robbed. My whole security team was killed. He replied angrily. Really? It doesn't like you're missing that much. I told him, looking around to see that it was still full of all kinds of crazy items. Oh wait, you're that guy! They came specifically for one item. A hammer made by Hephaestus. A nearly priceless one at that, considering who it was originally made for. He said almost mournfully. Now what do you three want? All right, do you know anything about someone getting murdered over a bike that Hephaestus guy might have made? I asked bluntly, giving up on a way to be clever about it. What? Absolutely not. Are you suggesting I kill someone? No, son. I'd have just offered the person any amount of money they took to get it from them. Then why are you in this guy's context? Destiny asked, aggressively shoving the phone in his face. I don't know who that phone is. Hmm? Oh, right. Destiny squeaked in embarrassment. This really shady guy who we think killed her, she explained, pointing at Rissa. Um, lady, I don't know how to tell you this, but she doesn't seem all that killed to me. What? No, that's not what I mean. She did get killed. We both of them did, kinda. And one was a ghost, and... Jose, help. She whined, giving up. The ghost in another body, I told the man, pointing at Rissa. And this, I added, walking behind Destiny and resting my hands on his shoulders, is Dracula's daughter. As I said, I could actually watch all the color drain from his face as terror washed over him. The Dracula. He asked as his voice shook so much it sounded like it was about to squeak. That's the one, and if you don't help us out, we're going to feed you to her. I said we're going to feed you to her, I repeated, giving Destiny a quick elbow in the side. Uh, what? Oh yeah, I'll totally eat you. She told him, struggling to get into character on the spot. Whoa, whoa oh, easy, okay, look. It wasn't me. I give you guys my word. I work with a lot of people and I don't know what all of them get up to every hour of the day. But I can tell you this. There's money in the stuff Hephaestus made. If you can verify it's his work, it's worth way more than its weight in gold. You gotta know what kind of cash the paranormal throw around, and even they don't bother collecting those artifacts, they're so expensive. And you can take that to the bank. Well, shit. I groaned as we left the man's home. Yeah, that was pretty disappointing, Rishia said with a sigh. Not disappointing. Troubling. I corrected her, causing her and Destiny to give me a confused look. It's starting to look like whoever was behind this has a lot of money and resources. And I'm starting to wonder about the way all these paranormals get this insane amount of money from. You mean you don't know? Destiny asked, sounding surprised at what I just said. Nobody's told you yet? No, it never came up. You know? Well, you might not have noticed, but I am one of them after all. As you might have picked up on, there's a tenuous segregation between regular humans and the paranormal and that the population at large isn't allowed to know about the paranormal world. And as you might imagine, 
keeping things that way needs a big incentive. Money. Every paranormal being can register to get a huge private subsidy from several world governments. The US is one of them, which is why you can get such a large congregation of us from all over the world. That inevitably led to services like Cerber taking advantage of the money that gets pumped into the community. They don't have a lot of alternatives. So the services can charge whatever they want, especially with the ones that can't blend in like I can. As she explained everything to me, an idea, an invasive thought, began to form in the back of my mind. I did everything I could to keep it from taking shape, shooting it deep down into the darkest pit of my brain before worrying about it later. Let's just go home and think this over, I suggested. Wanted to get a little rest before work. I'll get him. A voice spoke just as I opened my eyes to see Destiny leaning down towards where I'd fallen asleep on the couch. Shit! Stay back! I yelled before I knew what had happened. The next thing I knew, I was on the opposite end of the couch, holding the knife Hook had given me. Jose, what are you doing? Destiny asked nervously, noticing that I was holding what was actually a threat to her. You just said you were going to get me! I shouted back at her. Jose, calm down. I think you were having a nightmare or something. But you just said... I started to argue. Risa told me it was getting close to time for you to start work. So I said I'll get him up. I was trying to wake you for work. What's going on? She asked as she began to sound generally worried. I never told her about the thing in the woods and what happened that night. But it had been eating at me the whole time and well, you don't actually know you're having a psychotic break when you're in the middle of one, so go easy on me. I don't believe you! You plan to get back at me for what happened to fate. Admit it! I yelled at her, still holding the knife between us, still convinced she was going to lunge at me in any second. What? Why would you even think that? She tried to ask, her eyes starting to water a little. Because you told me... I, I mean, no. You never said you weren't. I answered sharply. I never said I was going to do a lot of things. That doesn't mean you should expect me to do everything I never said I wouldn't. You're acting crazy. She tried to explain. Why would you think something like that? I don't know what to think anymore. I bellowed at the question. Ever since I started this bullshit, I've had days where I keep expecting to wake up and it all be a crazy dream. Or to come into the middle of a padded room mumbling about how I was dating Dracula's daughter and being part of Captain Hook's crew. Do you know what it's like to question reality every other day? I work for a woman with snakes for hair. I'm terrified of snakes. Why would I do that if it wasn't a goddamn nightmare? I delivered tacos to Slender Man. Yeah, Ray my ass. I know fucking Slender Man when I see one. You're not fooling anyone, Ray. What are you doing? I yelled as I saw Destiny slowly pick up the phone and scroll to Adeline's contact. I can't believe Serba has its own therapists. I sighed as I absentmindedly picked out a loose thread on the recliner. It's some of the best, actually. The lady from behind the desk said in that calm therapist voice. We know the one. Now, would you like to talk about what happened? Would that be okay? 